Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to Arawela Talks, a new podcast where you have myself talking to different people um, who have different experiences, and I honestly cannot wait. But today's episode is about... First, I want to introduce, before I tell you what it's about, I want to introduce... Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah, and uh, who are you to me? Your daughter. <laughs> You're my daughter. Oh, and we have another person joining us today. Yes, we do. You do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, thank you. I am Hoda Ali. I am a nurse and a specialist in safeguarding in primary schools in London. Yes. Yes. And do you want to tell everyone how old you are, Sarah? I am eight, but I'm turning nine. In yes. Like a lot of months. <laughs> in a few months. Today, we are here to discuss uh, safeguarding our children. Um, as many of you know, I am a single parent, and I know the struggles of not just only single parents, but parents in general have um, when it comes to safeguarding their children, especially in the society that we live in today, the amount of things children are exposed to. Um, I unfortunately had an experience where me and my daughter were in Turkey and I'll play the video in a minute but me and my daughter were in Turkey and I was in the hotel room and she was singing this song over and over and over again go on you explain so, what it was so basically it was a song that was like going viral on YouTube shorts on YouTube and then I listened to it I didn't know what the words in the song meant so I just sang it and act like it was nothing so yeah, and when my mum told me what most it, of the words meant, which were don't 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 say the actual bad. words. Yeah, they bad. were bad words. And I should I should have had asked before singing that song. Mm -hmm. But but now that I know, I never sang that song again. Can I just say as well? It is first of all, sorry, it's so good, Hubbard, that you actually even asking the word. But can I ask you, how did it make you feel when you find out what the word was? Well, well, I felt like, um, I don't know how to describe how I felt, but I felt something that I, I didn't want to know mm. what it what it meant, what it meant in the first place. Mm. And I should have just waited for the time for, for, for for it to be like told yeah but it's, yeah. it's not an easy way to find out no, about a certain word especially no. if it's on a kid's channel and it's um it attracts children to watch it and it's not like i said it is not your fault because you didn't put that uh, video on youtube and it is my duty as a parent to then explain to you why that song was bad. If I had said to you, Sarah, you're not allowed to listen to that anymore, and I didn't explain, how would you have felt? I would have felt like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, so mm. why exactly. didn't she just explain what I have done wrong? Because I, I really do not understand. No, but wow. did you, did you did see that, that as be doing something wrong? No, I didn't see it as doing something wrong. Good I girl. thought it was a mean, a meanless, harmful song. Yeah. Because, because, and by the way, it's not on kids' YouTube, so do not worry about that. No, it's on the general YouTube. Yeah, and like the it's, YouTube. it attracts who? Does yeah. mommy, would mommy watch videos like that? No, it, it, will it attract, attracts children. It, and it will attract other people. Mm. How would it make you feel if other children was watching that song? It would make me feel like, why, it was... It would f make me feel like, um, well, there is going to be some people, lots of children who watched it because it's internet mm -hmm. and that can happen sometimes. Yeah. But I would feel like. Would you feel bad for them? I would feel like. Or sad. Because I would feel like bad for them because what if their parents don't explain and just yeah. say, yeah. Like, that's bad. Do not watch it anymore because they would be like, it's just a harmless song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then. And then they would get, wow. they would just get into an argument. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I am so proud of you. I couldn't say it but any better than that. I it's know, amazing. It's really amazing. Really proud I of you. I love you so much. Yeah. And also before, I know you're going to introduce the song, but 
whoever is listening to this, if you're a parent, if you're an auntie, whoever you are, you have children around you. And it's so important, the terminology, what we say to children, the words we use, is what we need to be really, really careful. Yeah. And yeah. exactly this is what this song is about. Um, terminology. Yes. Somebody has signed that song out to go out to the world for children to actually sing along yeah. Yeah. and think it was a, it's a normal yeah. children's song. So terminology, we need to watch what we are saying and parents have a lot of work to do. A hundred percent, I agree. I, have to, I can't say I am the best parent in the world. No. Uh, I can't say that because you I don't can't. think anybody is perfect. Is anybody perfect? No, nobody no, in, nobody world in, world in the world is perfect. But this but this song wasn't just a song, it was a play. It so was a play, like yeah. in one pl in in like one place the play would have been shown to a lot of children because in the audience I, I on the on the like normal song mm. there, I ha I think I heard a lot of people like cheering. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was it was yeah. it was an actual play. So I'm going to allow you guys to look at the video. Uh, we're going to try beep the um, actual words but you will be able to um, read it if you're an adult um, but I'll give you guys a minute to watch that okay like a chocolate banana oh pecan samosa and thinness and one that says a gapple pie who should come inside but we're really not supposed to it's so cold Okay, so what do you think we're talking about today and so, the reason why so, we have a uh, uh, Hoda here? So, I'm not going to say the actual word, but yeah. I'll say what it's like, what it's like. We're talking like about safe, no, we're talking about safeguarding, safeguarding in yeah. general. Yeah. And the, what the video the that topic. you watched is part of safeguarding for us as parents. Okay, so we're going to go and give the floor oh. to the experts. So she can tell us um, one, of, there's a few things I want my daughter <coughs> to learn. Although she knows quite a bit already, I want her to really understand that this is not, you know, something that just mommy and her are talking about. This, she is a professional. She knows how to speak to um, children. She's been doing this for years mm. and Again, as part of safeguarding, I can't then sit here with my daughter and explain it the way that I not would as a person because it might not come across right for my daughter. So I want to do the best that I can to safeguard her and to educate her as well. And mm. I'm so happy that you're here to kind of support <laughs> me because I need the help. Thank you so much for having me. And... Congratulations on your podcast, first thank of all. You. And I thank you for thank you for inviting me to be your first ever podcast. And and also wow. it's an amazing topic that you pick because this is something that every parent talks about. You know, every parent would like to know. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately within our where we came from as well, we do have a lot of parents who don't actually speak the language. Yeah. You know, in um the children go to school and maybe they walk into school, they maybe go into primary school or secondary school. And how do you talk to them about safeguarding if you don't even understand safeguarding yourself? Yeah. Um so I'm a nurse. I worked in NHS over 10 years. But about seven years ago, I have been approached because I've been doing a lot of safeguarding in the NHS and um, teaching um, and talking about, in especially in FGM, which is female genital mutilation. And yeah. that I moved on. So I've been, uh, it's, somebody came to me and said, hold up, can you please lead this project? Because that is when the schools, 2015, it became mandatory to talk to children, including FGM. But when I took the job, I realized when it comes to safeguarding, like parents don't know. Mm. So the way I design my whole workshops and how I work with the school. So first thing is to work with the school, understand what the safeguarding is. How do they safeguard children? Who is the safeguarding leader? And then I put five different parent workshops because yeah. I refuse to work with children because this is in primary school. 
end. And today we're just going to talk primary school because yeah. it's really important to talk to children at the right time, at the right age. You cannot talk to a child in children about safeguarding in year seven the way you would talk to a child who's in year six or year five or year four. And so that is really, really important. Uh, so with the school, with the parents, it's actually, and I will ask in this podcast, as every parent, when you drop your children to the school, so 8.30, you are running, you drop them to school, how do you know how the children in the school safeguard your children? How do you know the building is actually safe? How do you know the classroom they go into in is safe? How do you know the teachers are safe? How do you know when they go out for a day trip, the person who's driving the bus, mm. are they okay to work with children? All of these are safeguarding. So this is what I do with the parents and online safety also. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I teach year three to six and about my body, my rules and yeah. the pants rule, which is what we're going to discuss today. The pants rule was set up by NSPCC. Every letter stands for something. And it's actually the easiest way to safeguard children to learn how to keep themselves safe, yeah. that to understand their body belongs to them, that nobody can touch them. Yeah. Nobody can make them do something they don't want to do. And if that happens, who do you go and talk to? Yeah. So now, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, if somebody makes you scared or make you want to do something you don't want to do, who do you go and talk to? You talk to a, an adult you trust. It, Absolutely. Or you can like talk to a friend that's like older than you. Yes. Mm -hmm. The main thing to always remember is to go and talk to somebody you trust, an adult you trust. If you are in school, it might be your teacher, it might be the dinner lady, because what we need to understand with children, they actually choose who they trusted trust. adult is yeah. even look around the house sometimes you will see children who are around their auntie telling all the secret because auntie's in the house and they won't talk to their mom yeah. it's the same in the school there are children who don't talk to their classroom but they love the dinner lady so yeah. when they go for lunch it's like they talk it to her and everything so we need to let children be children but to understand how to keep themselves safe so in primary schools that's what i use i use this slogan for my body my rules and the pants rule so let me just explain what the pants rule okay, are please. and Sarah, have you heard about the pants rule before? Well, it's been in one of one of, um in my old school in a classroom, and it was like just behind the door. So when you close it, it, it was just that. You will okay. see, amazing. Good, good. Yes. I don't remember what all um, that stand for though. It, that's what we're going to discuss today. So the um, pants rule is been is actually being thought in primary school from reception. It is, it's just the wording that changes as they get older. Yeah. But it's about learning about this, but it's your body, it's your rules, and nobody can make you do something you don't want to do. Absolutely. So the pants rule, what does the P stand for? Private. What is the whole word? Do you remember? So, pri pri <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to okay tell you. Don't hire. Go on. Hey. Okay, I'm going to tell you. So P it stands for privates are private. Mm -hmm. A, always remember your body belongs to you. And no means no. T, talk about secrets that upset you. And S, speak up, someone can help. So pants it stands for, each letter stands for that. So children in that. primary schools, actually, you can go to NSPCC, you can go onto YouTube, and there's a song called The Pantasaurus. Yeah. And I know a lot of parents who might be listening will understand that because once you hear that song, it stays in your brain. Yeah. And it's important because that song, when your children are learning from year one, that my body belongs to me mm. and nobody can touch me and nobody can make me do something I don't want to do. It is my body, it's my rules. And if, if I'm scared, if I'm worried, I go and talk to my trusted adult. And that is so important. So NSPCC have so many different and help and different things in their website. So they yeah. will have guides for parents. They have guides for parents with children with learning disability. They have guides for children with autism. They have actually guide for children. They have guide for parents. So it's actually a lot of information that they give parents and all based on safeguarding. Keep your children safe. And the talk should never stop in the classroom. 100%. This is the, we, the, one of the biggest problem we have right now is, I don't think is it should internet. Start in the classroom either. I don't think it should no, end there. It should, I don't think it should start there either. I think that as soon as a child is starting to walk, they need to understand 
because it's about putting the seed in their head. Yeah, you know, slowly. if you put that seed in the child's head and the child is growing up and they understand it's my body, it's my rules, but also it's my body, I have to be kind to my body. I yeah. can't hurt my body. They need to understand in that way as well. Yeah. They also need to understand that they have rights. They have rights to speak up. They have rights to say no. Yeah. They have rights to say I don't want to do that. They have rights to say, if somebody says, come and give me a hug or give me a kiss, they have the right to say no. 100%. Also, we need to understand cultural, mm. right? So I grew up in Somalia. And when I was younger, you every auntie or uncle or anybody comes, it's like, go and give them a hug. Go give them a uh, kiss. Go and do that. Yeah. Nobody asked me, actually, am I okay to do that? You know, yeah. but also those was at different times. When I was growing up, we didn't have the internet. Children are exposed a lot of things now. So when I was younger, it wouldn't bother me. Where now it bothers me. I look back and I'm like, why did we did that? You know, so it's really important that you give children the space for them to decide okay. what they want, but also to recognize and know culturally, I can't say somebody, no, I don't want to give you a kiss. I don't want to give you a hug. But there's a respectful way oh, I can say hello. Yeah. There's a respectful way, way I can say bye mm. without you touching me, without you giving me a kiss or a hug. So children, ha in, we need to guide children, but also give them the freedom to understand that their body belongs to them, but no one else. Yeah. No, I think that is really, really important. But I think for me, I didn't know the pants rule, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. But from the moment my child turned two, I explained to her what her privates are, where they are, and nobody, just like you said, nobody is allowed to touch your body apart from yourself. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Especially at a very young age where they don't know the difference between, you know, the, a good touch or a bad touch. You know, just someone... You know, yeah, walking past Arthur's you and they maybe shoulder. touch. Yes, it's, it's, it's not necessarily bad, but you know, constant you know hand movements in certain areas can get a little bit more, I guess. Yeah, um, and that's inclusive. exactly because in primary school, this is what we teach children, but also working with the parents, I would yeah. ask them, what's what's the different good and bad touch? Mm. You know, and like you said, are you you know, queuing somewhere and you're walking and somebody touch you by, you know, by accident by shoulder or is somebody actually touching your body or yeah. your privates, right? So it's about knowing that, but it doesn't matter if it's about comfortable. If somebody's making you feel uncomfortable, mm. speak to your trusted adult because 100%. nobody have the right to touch you, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's children about understanding that. But does anybody have the right to touch you anyway? No. no. No, right? Does anybody have the right to touch you under your pants? No. No. So it's about understanding the difference. Also, other thing that we talk about that based on the pants rule is good and bad, um, good and bad secret. Can somebody tell me what's the difference of good and bad secret? A good secret is like, a good secret is like when you're telling someone when like a secret, like when you're on like a, sl a girl's sleepovers as a, a as a like a scenario mm. okay. you would be like oh my god this is my secret this is my secret that's a good so, secret so but what, a bad secret what type of secrets do you think are like oh i have um a crush on somebody or or that's not uh, this is uh, that's, the type of food that i like or yeah, i'm going a, on holiday don't tell an anyone okay, that's an okay one okay that's a good one that's mm. a good secret but a bad secret is like you, when you tell someone like someone you know like no 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 and you're saying like oh i i i hate this person today but do not tell anybody mm. like so like mm. when you like when you do something you bad do, and you're trying to hide it yeah like when when you like try to rob a bank for a scenario mm. and then and then you rob them and then ask them for <laughs> all their money and then <laughs> that's like and then you go back and then and then only the bank people know and and then and then you're like to don't the tell bank anyone. people <laughs> do not tell them. 
anyone about this. Yeah. So let me give you an example. <laughs> and God. and also... The beat, yeah. I would not have come up with that I scenario. Wow. I mean, that is really good. But, and that's what we're saying because children are, have their own words of explaining. They, 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 they actually really know do. what it means. Yeah, they just yeah, have yeah. their own words. So it's really important when you're talking to the children to talk to them at the right time, at the right age. But also a child-friendly way where they can understand and they retain that information, right? Yeah. So in primary schools, when I'm talking to the children is... Good and bad secret. Let's mm. say it's mommy's birthday, Saturday. Sarah, do not tell anybody. Do not tell mommy. We're going to go out. We're going to buy, we, we're cooking. We're going to have some music. We're going to get a cake. Now the Saturday came. We get everything ready. Mommy walks through the door. You do that. What do you say? Surprise! Surprise! Now what happened there? That, that's a good The secret easy. came out, right? Yes. So mommy knows we were keeping our secret by organizing this birthday. But when she arrived, we say surprise, the secret came out. Yeah. So a good secret is a secret that always comes out. Bad Absolutely. secret is a secret that somebody makes you feel uncomfortable. They make you scared. They make you worried. And they say to you, don't tell anybody. Mm. This is our little secret. It's between me and you. Don't tell anybody. Remember what the T stands for on the pants rule. What does the T stand for? Talk about secrets that upset you. Remember. That is, that is why you always have to remember what the pants we'll, really stand we'll, we'll for, practice. right? Yeah. So bad secret is a secret that makes you scared. It makes you worried. It gives you that uh-oh feeling. All the mm -hmm. children actually will say, it gives you that uh-oh feeling. They yeah. understand that it makes them feel scared. Yeah. Talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Go and talk to somebody that you trust. No means no. Nobody, absolutely no one can make you go and, and do something you don't want to do. Yeah. Also, when we say privates are private, there are only two times somebody might be looking or touching your private part. When, mm -hmm. that's, when that can be? Go on, be honest, Mama. Only two times. Um. Think about when you were younger. When you were younger, could you wash yourself? No. Can you clean yourself? No. Can you cook for yourself? No. Who was used to do that? Mommy. Mom, right? Yep. So sometimes when your mommy washing you, she might be cleaning you, right? That's not, that's that is your mommy. parents. The other time is if you are sick, right? If your private part is hurting you, who do you where did you go? Where do I go? Oh, hospital. Good girl. So you oh. go to the doctors, right? Yeah. When you go to the doctors, do you go by yourself? No, I go with mom. Exactly. So when you go to the doctors, you go with your trusted adult. You go with your mom. Oh, that's also, when you go to the doctor, the room, the doctor will have a nurse there. The doctor never examines the children without having a nurse there. So in that room, there are three trusted adults. Yeah. But also, when the doctor is examining you, if you feel uncomfortable, can you say to the doctor, stop? Well, yes, but, but what about... But the, yeah, you can. Yes. Go on, go, on, go on, ask. You can ask you a know, question if you want to ask. Know, you know, um, that scenario has actually happened to me before it has. Okay. And but she got really, really uncomfortable. Okay, but do you tell stopped, the doctor yeah. to stop? And yeah. I got scared. I didn't want to. Even though it's just a girl doctor. It's mm. okay because it's your body. It's your rules. If yeah. you feel uncomfortable, you could say to the doctor, stop. Nope. So then what you do is because you are there to see the doctor to feel better, right? You go and talk to your mom. You go and get some water. Water, maybe go and get fresh air but go back for the doctor so it can make you feel better yeah <coughs> sorry those are the only two times somebody might be looking or touching your private part absolutely no one no one have the right to look or touch or make you do something you do not want to do it is your body it is your rules oh, you okay. have the right to say no can i ask you one more question before i finish also if somebody says to you, which part of your body is private, what would you say? I would say, well, for me, I would usually just say the private part. Mm -hmm. But then if it was like a kid asking, I would say on, like something like on, under your fist and under your pants, I guess. Okay. Under your vest. To make, to make sure that, that they, they don't, understand. so they understand properly. Because they'll be like, what's that? What's yeah. that? That is really good answer. Good Absolutely. Yes, your body is your body and it's your private, right? It's your body. However, when we say privates are private, if you are a girl, part of your body that is covered by your pants and covered by your vest is private. Yeah. If you are a boy, 
the part of your body that is covered by your pants are private. Yeah. When we say private, are private, that's what we mean. Also, it's really important for children to know the scientific language mm -hmm. when it comes to their private part. Yeah. Did they teach you that yet at school? Well, <laughs> the girl already knew through Because me. it's really I important. Knew. It is very important. Yeah. We know that over 70% of adults who now talk about their experience actually known to their abuser. That would, they, that would be an abuse when they were children. Mm. So this is not somebody that far away. Yeah. Abuser can be your next door neighbor. It could yeah. be the person you say good morning. Oh, yeah. It could be the, 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 the person oh, behind the shop, yeah. Yeah. right? Could, abuser could be anyone. Yeah. But the yeah. main thing is my child to understand, hey, it is my body, my, my rules, and you cannot make me do something I don't want to do. Mm. It's about them understanding that no one can make me do something I don't want to do. Period. Simple as that. It is your body. It belongs to you. Also, I will say to the parents mm. who are maybe in our community, who mm. do not understand, who think this is, you know, my child is too young. Abuser don't know about too young. Children yeah, abuse other all. children, right? Yeah. Abuse is not just the adult. It's, it could be anyone. 70% is known that to is the abuser. That is the most scariest thought ever mm -hmm. but this is why again it is so important to not only safeguard your children but learn how to safeguard your children because okay. we're gonna role play me and you are gonna role play i'm your uh, old um gra uh, auntie who you've never seen before okay are you ready yeah are you ready I'm gonna just push this back here so you can be a little bit closer come closer Hi, Sarah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you did to do. Huh? Okay, just say assalamu alaikum then. Assalamu alaikum. Come, Maxi! My. Maxi, can't help you. Maxi, Maxi. Hi, Kali, salam. Assalamu alaikum. Good girl. Perfect. Yes. Uh -huh. Good girl. I got so scared are you for gonna, a moment. I don't be scared. Gonna go are you gonna. <laughs> no, be careful. <laughs> Don't be scared. It doesn't mm. matter who it is. Yeah. Your mother's alive and well. Okay? Mm -hmm. They have something to deal with. Wait. Arawelo. Yeah. Right, yeah. let's go back so to our safeguarding. Yeah. What did we learn today? <laughs> what did we learn today? Some bits were a bit off topic. Go on. It's okay. It's okay. Go on. What did we um, learn today? We learned um, that not everybody is the same and the no pa and then and the pants rule mm -hmm. we learned a lot today what I didn't else expect what else what else did this. we learn we learned um we learned that people uh, pe nobody has the rights to touch you unless you're like a baby and you're like mo your parent is like trying to wash you because you can't wash yourself good girl and what do you want other parents to understand when it comes to having important conversations like this? No, no matter what, just, just be free and just tell them, just tell them no matter what. Just tell them like tell in who? a kitty, like tell your child in a kitty way mm. so they will understand in their own language. Mm-hmm. Um, Otherwise, the internet and other people will, in turn, expose or explain things to your children in a way that you might not be comfortable with. Mm. So you got to do it first. I made a habit of telling Sahara important things because of my own personal experience. I, <laughs> when I say I had to, um, like, have to explain it to her that, um, an abuser can be a family member. Mm -hmm. It's very tough, yeah. especially for her little mind to think, oh, you know, I don't want her to be scared of every single person in her family. Mm -hmm. But if she's ever put in that position or put in that predicament or that situation, mm -hmm. I hope that never happens. But I'm, like I said, I'm a single parent. Even parents with, uh, I mean, um, children with two parents, they struggle to look after their child. Mm -hmm. We don't have eyes at the back of our heads, yeah. you know? So it's n ensuring that they know no matter what is said, they can come to you and they can speak to you about anything. Yeah. 
Absolutely. The world and this is the thing. Um, children, girls, younger and younger and younger are getting their period. The youngest that I saw that had her period was year three child. She was actually in year three. And she got her period in the classroom. And this child thought she was dying. Oh, I so I, was I want you life. to imagine like what that can do to that child. You know, her mental health, even in the future, just thinking that she's dying. And this is what we are saying. It is important to have an open dialogue with your children, that with your so child. Funny. So it becomes normal for the child to understand this circle of life. Mm. It's normal for to wake up one morning, you're looking at the mirror and all of a sudden, if you are a boy, you have like facial hair or you're taller than yesterday. Or if you are a girl, you have a little bit of, you know, your chest look different. All of these are normal, yeah, they you are. know, but yeah. if you have not sit down with your children and explain it, these are the things that children have anxieties about. Children are now having mental health. We have more children now are seeing a therapist than ever before. Yeah, and this is why so open dialogue it is so important. Also, the internet is the devil in your home. Yes, you is. have a whole wide world open to your home. How do you deal with your internet safety at home? Yes, we talk to children about how to keep themselves safe online. We explain it in different age groups, in different year groups, right? But it's that conversation being happening at home as well no nope. and also do what uh, what happens home. at your home like do you have a place where when the children are using the internet is there one place or do they go to their room and they close the door behind them <laughs> do you know there is no this, way. these are the no but this is, is no this way. is happening this yeah, is the is. thousands and thousands of parents she actually that I, tried me the other day she was like oh i'm just gonna speak to Upstairs, I said ah, no you ain't you can speak to right here <gasps> you know parents are saying i'm i'll say beep Parents yeah. are saying, I'm worried about the internet, but also, what do you know about the internet? Have you sit down with your child and asked them, what do they know about the internet? Did they actually know the danger of internet? Um, internet is like driving a car. Yeah. If you do not know how to cr drive the car, you're going to crash. You might kill yourself. You're going to kill somebody. Ooh. But if you know how to drive the car, it could be an amazing tool. It, it carries your shopping. But yeah. also, you could be like Louis, Ham Louis Hamilton and make a lot of money, right? Mm. Internet is like driving a car. If you know how to use the internet, it's an amazing tool. If you do not know how to use the internet, it's dangerous, it's scary, and it can truly get out of hand. Yes, it can. Um, you know, so when we're talking about safeguarding, all of these are what safeguarding is about. And one thing if I can leave with this podcast today to say to parents is... Understand what safeguarding is in the school your children are going. Yeah. Have you read the policies? Because they are, we have the government policy. Every school will adopt the policies. You know yeah. the first school you talked about, which is predominantly in white area. Their policy will be for that community. The local oh, school policy. Their policy was two thousand from 2017. Yes. They so this is what I'm saying. Online, go to your school website, go to the policy section. You will see all the uh, local school policy. Read about it. Get to know. Even if it is two pages a day, read it. Because it is for your own good. It's your understanding to, in order to protect your children, your home, and your community. Yep. Right? And find out how do these schools safeguard children? What is the Child Protection Act in this school? Also, it's on the website. Yeah. You can actually have your own time while you are sitting on the phone, either in your air or you look at social media. Take time out to read about it. If you do not have this open dialogue with your children, they will go and get the wrong information, either from Someone the playground, else. from the internet, right? So do you want somebody else to tell your child how to keep themselves safe? Or would you like to tell them? The reality is danger is out there. It doesn't happen every single day. But who said it can't happen to you? Children deserve the best. 100%. And every single child have to be protected by their family, by their communities. Every child have the right to live life without a fear. Our children are learning in primary school how to keep themselves safe. But then they go home and they're being abused. Yeah. This, half, this cycle has to be broken. Why we are here things. today, one second, um, the reason we are here today is because children are being neglected left, right, and center by the people who love them. Yep. But if you have an open them. dialogue, you can be right now like Sarah and Shamsa. Look at how clever that this little girl is and understand everything. Have that open dialogue. And that's one thing I really would leave with people today to think about it and say, how? Have I asked children 
this to my children? Do I ask them these questions? Do I ask them, do you worry about the internet? Mm. If you're worried, what scares you about the internet? Yeah. What do you think about this? Also, please, NSPCC, you have NetAware. NetAware parents, mm. you type, if they, play, if they want a new game, NetAware will tell you what age is supposed to be, what's in that in game. Social media, go to NetAware, anything that is to do with online, when you put in there, it will tell you what is in there, what is the age group, and what is the danger is. Sarah, any last words from you? Um, well, you, you know when you were talking about the period thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I remember what you told me like a few days ago, oh. that I, I was being very weird, and every time you had a period, I was like, <laughs> oh yeah she was like she was like because i told her they was this is why i say i can't take myself serious when i'm explaining things to my child because when i was explaining that I, she was like but what is the egg so i said that's you were an egg before so it's the ones that don't become babies mm -hmm. and she was like okay so she took that as the eggs are her siblings so every month she was like bye oh <laughs> another sibling but again that's why it's so important about open dialogue because it you're providing is. information and a knowledge that no one else can provide for your child also it's important that you don't have to take yourself seriously because you're not here to scare the child exactly. we are here to tell children how to keep yourself safe but no one can make do you do that, something please. you don't want to do private is private talk about secrets that upset you you speak up someone can help it's so important it but is. also don't scare the children tell yeah, the child the right time at the right age yep. the way you will talk to your year six child about period you wouldn't talk to that in, in year four about that no. if you are talking to you have to choose the right words also parents you don't have to answer everything your child is asking you yeah because there are certain things that they might find out from the playground, might find that from the internet, but it's not the right age for them. Mm. So explain why, but also you don't have to answer everything because their little brain can only take so much. Yeah, that's so why I said always to the child like, friendly. You gotta wait. You gotta wait a little bit, step by step, babe. Keep your she child has a lot safe. Of questions. Mm -hmm. But okay. we're gonna get to all of those questions very soon, as I will be having Sarah here as a longer um series type of thing for me and her so we can learn from each other but the next episode is i have a special guest and i'm not going to tell you anything about it until then so you'll have to subscribe <laughs> and click that like button and the bell and the notification and the notification button let's <laughs> not forget and share and share Thank you so much for joining Arawela Talks to Sahra and Hodo. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye. Well